When you go, go the right place. Maybe the last place you ever go. So you don't ever know where the end is. So we got our best before you tonight. Yes, ready now. Nine, nine, nine. Yes, yes, Okay, I would like to ask the congregation, walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. And all wept and bewailed her. But Jesus said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die jesus said in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if I go I will come again and receive you unto myself I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the art of man the things which God are prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. To all mourners and celebrants of the life of Brian Knight, I want to say welcome to you as we are gathered here to celebrate the life of a young man who for all intents and purposes did well by way of achievement and was an aspirant in going further and or I uh, in his pursuits and achievement. On the basis of remorse, I say, what a waste. We do mourn his loss or the loss of his family. And we pray their strength in Jesus' name. At this point in time, Minister Dennis will come forward to perform his duties. Thank you very much, Pastor Saman. You may be seated for a while. All protocols observed. Good morning, everyone. 
Greetings, brothers and sisters. And by extension, to those who are viewing this service via the internet, I greet you this morning in the mighty and exalted name, Jesus, our soon coming King. We are gathered here this morning on a very sad occasion. We have come in grief acknowledging our human loss. A loss that seems to beg for more questions than answer. Today we celebrate the life of Brian Tatino or Tino Knight, affectionately called Brown Boss or Trigger. Sunrise 16th of the 9th, September 1999, sunset the 18th of the 12th, 2000. And 18. I want to personally encourage Sister Price, Sister Tracy, and family with the familiar words of one of my favorite songs Be not dismayed, what tear betide. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. Before we do the opening hymn, there are a few rules that I want to lay down so we can have a smooth flow of the program. The first rule is I'm going to ask those of us who have a cell phone that you kindly put them on silent or if possible turn them off so we do not have a distraction of the service. I'm also going to ask of you Persons that are on the program to render an item that you make sure excuse me of you also him the lily of the valley. I found a friend in Jesus is everything to me. Is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul, the lily of the valley. In him alone I see. Can we all stand for a change? By way of announcement, a black and white purse is missing. If you happen to see a black and white purse somewhere around. You could just come up and present it to me and I'll have it presented to the person. After three, one, two, three. <laughs> Is everything to me is the fairest is the lily of the valley all I me fully oh in 
sorrow is my comfort, in trouble is my stay. He tells me. He is the lily of the valley. He is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He taken and all my sorrows born. In temptation he is my, my strong and mighty power. I'm all for him forsaken and all my idols stored. From my heart and now it keeps me by its spot. Though all the world forsake me and sit and tempt me so. Through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. Is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Is the fairest of the thousand to my soul. He'll never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me there. While I live by faith and truth, do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I'm not in now to fear. From my mind, nor he my hungry soul shall fear. Then sweeping up to glory, I see his blessed fear. Where rivers up, the light shall ever roll. Is a lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. Is a fairest of sand to my soul. In sorrow is my comfort, in trouble is my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. Is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. We praise the Lord. Lift your hands and give God a praise. In everything, we ought to give thanks. Even though it's a very sad occasion, but in it we still have to give thanks. At this time, I'm going to invite Deacon Maitland to do the opening prayer, followed by the statement of purpose and acknowledgement by Pastor Summon. And then the first lesson will come to us from is Ecclesiastes 12, 1 to 13, reading by Tyrus Utah and Erica Utah, family friend, in that order. prayer at this time. Let us pray. Heavenly and eternal Father, our God, our Lord, our Savior, our King, mighty is thy name and great thou art to be praised. Lord, despite the circumstances that we have gathered here this morning, you are still God in your own right and there is none like you, Lord. We walk this world all over. There is none other that we can find Lord, we, we just glorify you because you are God. We lift you up because you are God. You give life. The greatest gift unto man is what you give. From the foundation of the world, God, you created man with one purpose but to serve you. And despite our circumstances, we are going to lift up your name this morning. God, we look to you by faith believing and we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First of all, I would like to acknowledge 
Almighty God, our creator and the true giver of life. And I want to say to us that God's original intent was not that there should be death. He clearly stated that in scripture after completing his creation and incidentally he made a perfect home for man before he made man all that would ever be needed for man's survival and sustenance was provided and he said at each interval it was good when he came to the sixth day after creating things for five days he said it was very good after creating man but he gave a warning he said to man that there is a particular tree in the middle of the garden in the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die as in separation from God it's unfortunate that man disobeyed and we experienced death and all the pains and the agony the hurt, the loss that goes with death And I must say before I say anything more that thanks be to God, said scripture, who through our Lord Jesus Christ had given us the victory. We have victory over death through Jesus Christ, exemplifying that there is hope for a resurrection once there is death by raising from the dead himself and is alive until now and will be alive forevermore and so it is without saying that it's a sad and as was said before experience to experience the loss of this young promising life in the person of Brian Knight We want to acknowledge the positive exploits that he did while alive. Someone who I knew personally from a small child, watched him grow because I'm very acquainted with the family. And oh, what a loss. And I just want to encourage us as we mourn his loss and we offer our condolences to the members of the bereaved family that we once again take note and acknowledge that death is a real thing and i want to say to you please in the process of acknowledging that death is real that eternal life is real whether or not you can grasp it which must only be grasped by faith in God God has promised he has exemplified that it is so and let us take a page out of this experience today that if we acknowledge the one true life giver and if we be careful by the grace of God we will live long lives may God bless you in Jesus name first lesson comes to us from Ecclesiastes 12 1 to 13 
which will be read by Tyrese Uter and Erica Uter, family friend. Good afternoon, everyone. The first lesson will be read from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 through 13. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out of the windows be darkened, and the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of which is high, and the fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden ball be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge, yea, he gave good heed, and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goods, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Thirteen and last, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. May God add his richest blessings to his word. I now invite the Weber Seventh-day Church of God to come with their selection. I know that we said in all things we have to give God thanks. So can we just magnify the name of Jesus? It's the name of Jesus. It's not the situation that we want. It's not what we expect. It's not joyous. But in all things, we still have Lord. to give the Lord thanks. Can we magnify the name of Amen. Jesus? Amen. Bless God. I know we still can do better than that because we have Bless life this morning. Jesus. Can we Amen. magnify the name Hallelujah. of Jesus? Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Amen. This song, as we're going to do, is an encouragement to those of you who are here with us. Recognizing that... In spite of everything, God is in control. Do we believe that today? Amen. Do we believe Lord. that God is still Amen. in control? Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. You may feel down and think that God has somehow forgotten. That you are faced with circumstances you can get through. And right now it seems there's no way out and you're going under. Proven time. 
times and times again he'll take care of you if you know it you can sing it with us he'll do
lift our hands and just give God a praise. Give God a praise. It doesn't matter what situation you're in right now. You may not know how. You may not know when. But he's going to do it again. Do I have a worshiper here? Do I understand what I'm talking about right now? I said you may not know how. You may not know when. But he's do it again. Thank you very much. Feel like I'm in church. What do you say? Amen. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. We have co-workers tributes coming up. First one, Shamar Mullings, followed by Davian Williamson in that order. It is said that life is short, just like the postman standing at the door. He is there and then gone. Life is like the sun that rises and then it sets. There is so little time between the cradle and the grave. So little time between our good mornings and our good nights. So little time between our hellos and our goodbyes. The way we live, our lives each day, makes up our eulogy. So ask yourselves, when I pass on, what will be said of me? Can I get an amen? amen. Shamar Mullings. Good morning, everyone. Let me say that again. Good morning, everyone. Those persons who know me would know that I am not Shamar Mullings. And I am not Davian Williamson. Today, I stand between you and them. At this moment, I am the strongest of all three. So I am here to somehow cushion it for them. I would be one of the biggest liars in the world if I should tell you that this is a happy moment. I am not telling any one of us that we have anything at all to smile about, except we know the Creator, the God Himself who gives life, and the one who allows us to sleep, the one who allows us to wake up in the morning, the one who allows us to live in whom we have our being. So this morning, I don't have any pretty story to give. Cry if you must. Miss him if you must. But I know this young man I have met, I have known him since 2017. And he's one of the happiest souls I know. Honestly. Sometimes he calls home, he calls to my house. Shamar is my son. And early morning, whatever time, late time. The phone is placed on speaker. And every one of us in the house, we have to make a talk. Everybody has to talk to Brian. So I just want every one of us who he has passed through our lives and touched us in any way, shape, or form. Remember those good times. He can only go if you let him go. He will never leave if you have him right there. He's a friend. He's a brother. He touched us in any different form, many different forms. The way he touched my life may not be yours. So just remember, he's never gone until you let him go. I'm just going to sing a song to see how best we could bring a little hope 
Is that okay? Good. When I'm low in the spirit, I cry, Lord, lift me up, for I want to go higher in thee. But the Lord knows I can't stand on the mountains, so he picked out a valley for me. leads me beside still waters somewhere in the valley below and he drew me aside to be tested and tried but in those As a dungeon where the sun seldom shines And I question, Lord, why must this be? Well, you know what? But he told me there is joy in my sorrow having the eulogy by Patrick Marsh followed by a selection from the Knox College High School and then the second lesson but let us stand for a change as they prepare themselves to come let us stand for a change we're getting too comfortable now better days are coming by and by when we reach the city
about Jesus going to prepare a mansion for me. Mr. Marsh will come at this time with the eulogy followed by the selection from Knox College and the second lesson Psalms 46 1 to 11 Julian and Juvet boy and cousins in that order. Miss Tricia Price, Mr. Carlton Knight, Brian's family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and privilege that I have this opportunity by the family to speak in this celebration of the life of Brian Tatino Knight. Brian was born on 16 September 1999 to two very loving parents of Tricia Price and Carlton Knight. His grandmother being Rosetta Price and late grandfather Samuel Price. Brian attended the following schools El Instituto de Mandevilla, Knox College High School, Bel Air High School. His first and only job was at Manchester Cooperative Credit Union. He attended with his family Weber's Church of God, Seventh Day. Let us remember at this time also the subsequent passing of Brian's dear and close friend, Joel Ricketts. 
together with his parents and family and friends. Brian and Joel were inseparable, and as they were in life, so they are now re reunited in death. May they rest together in eternal peace. We also remember Brian's friend, Tori, who is still recovering, and our prayers are with her and her family. Brian was extremely popular, both amongst his peers and right up the age spectrum to senior members of the community. This is because he was well brought up by his parents and taught the importance of respecting and appreciating people regardless of color, creed, sex, cultural background or age. He was a very confident young man who was extremely ambitious and has his stay with us been longer, there is no doubt that he would have been a great pillar in society. These attributes were clearly evident as he was provident, sorry, he was provided with a great platform, both educationally and the fact that at an early age he was taught the rudiments of life by Tricia, who was not only Brian's mother, but a best friend, a mentor, and also like an older sister. Such was their relationship. I have heard stories of the fun that they had together, a bit like the banter that you get between two siblings, which would include play fights, practical jokes, chasing each other around the room, and even throwing cold water over the shower at each other. But yet, there was mutual respect for each other. There were, of course, times when it was necessary for Tricia to revert to parent mode, and all this was done in love for someone dear to her, the sign of a good parent. Ryan was a jovial character and was the life and soul of the party. He loved swimming and really enjoyed the ocean. Brian had a great deal of respect and love for his dear father, Carlton, from whom he learned a variety of life skills. And Carlton was, at the time of his passing, assisting him in pursuing a career as an architect. It doesn't matter how long you live. You may be 100 years old, but there are just certain things in life that we will never understand. Brian's short stay with us being one of them. Nevertheless, I believe that although Brian's visit with us was very short, he has left a legacy to his peers and community. And today, we should celebrate the life and give thanks to Almighty God as Brian is in a better place now. Life has taught me to adopt the here and now mentality, as human beings simply cannot alter the past or predict the future. In other words, do what you can now to help those around you, as no one knows what will happen in the next second, let alone the next day. The big turnout today in celebration of Brian's life and to say farewell to him is synonymous with some great figure in the community who has lived many years. Brian was indeed a great figure in the community and his very few years with us simply demonstrates how much of a great and popular figure he was. Simply gone too soon. Brian is survived by his parents, grandmother, sisters, uncles, aunts, and numerous friends who loved him dearly. So much so that the void that has been left by Brian's passing will never be filled. But today we can pray and ask God to provide the grace and courage needed to come to terms with Brian's absence. And the spirit that he engendered amongst his peers and those that he came into contact with will live on in their hearts forever. 
Brian Tatino Knight, gone too soon. Rest in peace until we meet again. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. The Knox College family would like to give our deepest condolences to Brian, and I hope this song will give you some encouragement.
The second lesson is taken from Psalm 46, reading from verse 1 to verse 11, and it reads thus. God, God is our refuge and strength at very present time. In present. God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen range, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, so the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. 11 and last, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refu refuge. Here in the portion of God's holy word. We praise the Lord. You know something, church? I, I wish I could kill death. Anybody agree with me? Or somebody didn't hear what I said? I said, I wish I could kill death. But such powers was not given unto me. We're going to be having some family tributes at this time. First one coming from Shirley Storage, aunt. Second one by Kevon Knight, cousin. The third one is from Daphne Knight, cousin. Then we have Dylan Price, uncle. And Louise Russell, aunt. In that order. And I'm going to ask of you again that you try to make your tribute as brief as possible if i find that you're going overboard i'm going to just come and stand beside you so you know what that means thank you very much Good afternoon to everyone, especially to the Osterbury family. I'm just going to do this tribute song for my nephew and Osterbury family. I'm just going to do this tributing song for us. If 
If I could count all those teardrops that have fallen, it would seem like a notion to me.
Sebastian. Bless the Lord, everybody. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can no more. Trumpet, as Gabriel sounds the call. Cause at the midnight cry. Like ever before, have you ever seen young people? 
for day Oh, and the signs of these old times Look around everybody, they're appearing Good afternoon to everyone. This afternoon I stand on behalf of the Knights family to share briefly a tribute in words pertaining to Brian. I would also like to express my deepest sympathy and sincere condolences to the parents in particular, Tricia and Carlton, the Price family, Credit Union family, well-wishers, friends, and all those who were associated with him. Death is like a thunder. We are alarmed at the sound of it because it is usually accompanied with other factors and we sometimes do not have sufficient fortitude to endure such misfortune. Some people come into our lives and quickly go. Some stay for a while, leave footprints on our hearts, and we will never be the same. St. Matthew 5 verse 16 declares, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. As young as Brian was, he was one of those individual that this scripture made reference of. The personal qualities that he demonstrated from an early age, along with the professional qualities as he came to maturity, captivated the hearts of many. To us as family members, he was the apple of our eyes, especially to his dad, Carlton, as he was his only son. When someone dies, they are made mention of sarcastically 
deceitfully or truthfully. However, this afternoon, Brian can be talked about truthfully, and I honestly can use five words to describe him. Pleasant, peaceful, courteous, industrious, devoted, and enthusiastic. Of a shorty, the credit union family who interacted with him on a daily basis can attest to that. Brian could be described as a young legend in his own ways. And one does not have to be a Bob Marley, a Dennis Brown, Louis Bennett, or someone famous to be classified as a legend. According to the Webster's Dictionary, the word legend can be defined as a notable person which can be further classified as a remarkable or outstanding person and he functioned very well in that capacity. His words and his cheerful thoughts, his kind deeds, his, humil his humility made him a people's person. I can recall the various times he visited my house with his dad when my husband died and the words of encouragement he offered as a youngster was like medicine to my body. His presence was special when we had our regular Boxing Day or Christmas Day dinner hosted by his stepmom Pamela at his dad's house. And he always used this as an opportunity to get acquainted with other family members. And the frequent spoken words was, Lord, my family nothing, may have so much of them I may not even know them. It was at this time that Carlton would be calling up everyone. Come meet me, son now. You meet Brian yet? I'm the only boy. The memories are like yesterday, but he came and departed. So we cherish them like a crown of jewel. The loss of a friend or a family is like that of a limb. It may heal the anguish of the wound, but the loss cannot be repaired. When we hugged a week before his death, I did not know that this would have been my last hug as we bumped into each other on his way to Baptist Road where he normally does his tailoring. We exchanged a few words as he was hurriedly going back to work. But it's just a reminder to us, and I quote James 4 and verse 14, which states, Whereas we know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And thus we are encouraged to be prepared and to be ready. Death have a time to steal us away. Gone is someone we love so dear. Silent is the voice we miss to hear. Your life was a blessing, memories a treasure. You were loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. Psalms 37 verse 23 declares, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his ways. Today many hearts are aching and many swords are mourning at the passing of such a son of a soil. But I close with St. Matthew 5 and verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. To Tricia and Carlton as parents, I just want to leave Isaiah 41 and verse 10 with you. Having lost my very own husband, I know the pain that death brings. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of thy righteousness. Surely he has gone to a better place. God knows everything best, and so he took him. May his soul rest in perfect peace. God bless you.
Thank you very much, Ms. Knight. Delon Price. Followed by Louise Russell. And then after Louise, we're going to be having a remembrance by Karen Price, another aunt. Good afternoon, everyone. This afternoon, we are gathered here to show our last respect to our son, brother, nephew, cousins, cousin, co workers, and friends. There is no joy in us meeting in this way. But once a man born, he will die. And that is promised to all of us. So one day we all will be in similar position. I'm going to do this song and I hope it will encourage all of us. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame
your worship, God. Let me hear your worship, God. Let me hear you give him a hallelujah shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All protocol are observed. I am happy to be here this afternoon. Because if I was sick, I could not be here. Bless the name of Jesus. But I am here to witness the last of my nephew. Bless the name of Jesus. And I love my God because he's a deliverer. He's a comforter. He's an all-purpose God. He said whatsoever state we find ourselves in, we ought to give thanks. And so when I heard about Brian's death, when I heard about my father's death, you know, he have 10 girls and two boys. And I was very close to him, yes? Love my daddy bad, love my mommy, you know, but daddy's girl. And I knelt down at my bedside and I prayed. And my brother that just came up here said he's going to bring big rope to tie me. Have a cousin, she said she's gonna bring a big sheet. But I prayed for strength. Let me tell you something, when you know God, when you have a relationship with him, I'm not talking about people dressing up and coming to church. I'm not talking about looking possession to be a pastor, a minister, a evangelist, a missionary. In fact, I tell them that I don't need no title, they call me missionary. I said, all I need is to have a personal relationship with my God. And so when I heard of Brian's death, yes, I prayed and I went to the station and I uh, could not even focus because the head just mix up. I said, what is this? So I said, chef, I running down, you know, I went down to the bank and something just said, go down there and pray. And I prayed with them. And so I told them about Job. Job lost all that he had. But Job worshiped God. Bless the name of Jesus. I have four sons and a daughter, beautiful daughter, four handsome son, yes. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't exchange him for no one. My first son stayed with his aunt. And I can't tell you to have him trees because that cannot replace, he cannot replace Brian. Brian was a child that all of us spoiled Brian because I have five, some have four, some have five, some have three, some have two. Teresa had one and she's our baby sister. You can imagine what she's going to. But the same God that sent me to the bank said, go to her and tell her to worship. Who are you? Who are you to upset with God? Sometimes God done some stuff and we can't come at church. Can't worship God again. Let me tell you, I'm a crazy praiser. They call me mad. Sometimes even at the station, they said, one mad woman around here. So, oh yes. I remember when I was on the Cayman Islands and we was fasting and praying. And a obia man was next door. And when we start to fast and pray, he said to my landlord, Warn the woman over there, so because me have to go down in my garden, go she for me order. Hey, so worship, Tricia. God said to worship, and if you do other than worship, look out, you know, worship. Sometimes you feel to cry, worship in crying. Oh, yes, worship God. Because let me tell you something. Brian's death is a wake up call. Sometimes the only time we can talk good about someone is when they're in the casket. When he goes to work and you didn't tell him that, oh, I like your jacket. You look so nice and I like your tie. Look at my bishop here. Oh, you look so good. If you did not tell Brian that you love him and he look good, I'm not talking the other way around now. Because I will leap a nice girls, I go cry this evening. But you are giving the opportunity today to seek a friend before you need one. Every day we get up, well it. Every day we get up and we see people dead. And we take it for granted. The same pleasure that God take to make Brian and the same pleasure he take to kill him. Brian have gotten the opportunity. Six weeks, maybe about eight or ten then. Six weeks after his death, he was at church and my husband was there teaching. Before he's dead, before, thank you. And let me tell you something. 
the, the, the topic was the danger in rejecting Christ. Hey, I don't know what happened that day. I was not there. But my husband told me that he gave Brian, Ryan the driver, and even the youngest of our members, the opportunity to, to elaborate on the topic. Brian, you know, Brian was a bright boy. He gave his understanding well. But Brian walked out of the church and he didn't accept Christ. It's real, you know. Nobody beat you on the thing. You have to just talk or eating or eating go. You're dead out of God and Christ. I hell yeah, go. Yes, you keep God commandments, including the Sabbath day. Because it's a sign between don't let nobody tell you that it's abolish. Don't let nobody tell you that. Keep his commandments, including the Sabbath day. You will find life. So if my neighbor kick me up, no matter what they do to me. Oh God, man, if God say kiss, kiss my neighbor foot but I'll do it. I want to go to kingdom. And so you might be wondering how me treat her so bad and she's still a call to me. You think I know sarcasm and no hypocrisy? No, I'm not a hypocrite. Me have to love you with the love of God. Bless the name of Jesus. I am trading what I have here for that great convention day. And let me tell you something. Our money. I see some people are dressed up and I put on some high lash, then long so, I put on some fast nail. Me I tell you so, Bible say when we think we sweet, we stink, for you go burn we. Because let me tell you, I know, I know, you know, my sister Dar, Brian Esther, Brian was born in her hand. But let me see which of you love Brian the most. Just raise your hand, which of you? You, Merle, come up here, darling. That's why I mean, no say you're my big sister, you know. Run, come here, darling. Run, man, hurry up. Hurry up, man. Hey! Yes, I'm coming. Yes. I'm coming, minister. Just hold on one minute, dear. The devil no love when you attack the truth, either, you know. No, man. I need to send somebody a message. Are you not leave out here this evening? We don't you get what I am saying. Oh, no, walk around. We are walk around and go out like we stush. Oh, up here, so you come. Oh, my God. I never want you up here, you know. You want to exchange position with Brian because you love him the most. Go to you. Go to your sister. Go to your seat, darling. You see, though, she put up her hand that she love him the most. But I am alone. Me married for 30 odd years now. I'm in love for my husband like cook food. But when I die, he might run for me. He might go seek another wife. Hey! But let me tell you something. It's appointed unto man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. So some of us are play church. Minister play a church, missionary play a church, deacon play a church. But let me tell you something. And some of you are unsaved. Christians look down on you like, oh no, I'm so saved and sanctified. You are nothing but man of those. No make them pop. Don't let us pop style on you. Once you repent, you're gonna come in and pass us out. Because the church is playing. Every time you come to a funeral, you see something like that, man. Get something in your spirit, no man, to know that death is real. And these young people, all they're going to do is cry. And all his girlfriends find another man. And you come back in the same life. Repent! But God told me the other day, few days back, that his kingdom is near. And that is why people are dying old seal. It's only God we have hope. So I'm going to hand over. Tracy, I'm going to give you one verse of this song. I, I sing all night last night and the voice gone. I sing all night. Come, Tracy. Oh, bless God. Come, sister. We have to talk it out and sing it out, minister. We are obedient, but we have to make the people know that sin is a reproach to any man. And the only way you're going to get for sin is death. Full stop. Done with. Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw you go. So, I expect you to come to the altar today and ask the minister to pray for you before you go. If you are not yet saved, bless God. Come, my baby sister. Yeah, you don't just storm. Yes. been so good I can complain oh yes when 
everything she had. Jesus. Hallelujah to the holy name of Jesus. When men on earth, when we have done our best, angels in heaven can't do no more. And so this song, it was sung earlier, uh, but it is uh, the theme of my heart because I know God for myself. Hence, I am standing on the promises of God. And the Lord giveth and the Lord take it away. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When I heard the news, I bowed down before God and I worship him and I tell him that God, I need your strength now. And he gave me Jeremiah 31 and said, I should dry up my tears and gird my loins with worship. And it has been that way since. And he said it's ministry and it's taking me higher. And who am I to question God? Hallelujah. So I know you heard it before. But I'm going to sing it again. Because God is a good God. When I'm low in the spirit, I cry, Lord, lift me up, for I want to go higher in thee. But the Lord knows I can't stay on the path. 
Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. In the valley, he restored my soul. Before my sister saw reading, just want to acknowledge that. Tricia being the last girl, so we are in order here. Tricia, me, Job, Karen. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. God is worthy to be praised. Good afternoon, everyone. For we wrestled not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power, against rulers of darkness. Man that is born of a woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Today is by far the hardest day of my life. Let me tell you that I've been down this road before. I have lost my aunts, at least four of them, cousins, a nephew, friends, but most importantly, I have lost the first man I've ever loved, my father. But this is different. This is personal. As a mother, I often wondered how my life would be if something tragic were to happen to one of my children. Well, on December 18th, just after 9 p.m., I received a phone call from Jamaica that provided the answers to that thought process. The ultimate unthinkable, unthinkable evil had happened. My Brian, my chief, was taken from us. And my life and that of my family will never be the same. This has brought me to my knees and I am still there. Brian and I managed to forge a beautiful mother-son relationship over the years. I couldn't have loved him more if I had given birth to him. He was my son, my daughter's only brother. Our relationship was special. He was a force. It was a force to be reckoned with. He trusted me with his life. We somehow managed to establish a very, the very foundation upon which a great relationship is built, which is respect, communication, and honesty. Having established these skills, nothing was off limits. Our relationship thrived like no other. Brian trusted me, he respected me, he honored me in all things. He loved me dearly, and I loved him even more. Please bear with me as I share with you the promise and possibilities that we lost in this fine young man. Brian, in his very short life, managed to acquire and maintain the art of communicating from a very tender age he was very he was a very agile man he could talk his way in and out of any situation he was fearless soulful he was confident vibrant charismatic optimistic <laughs> young man he had a zest for life. And he always enjoyed himself. Even when things didn't go as planned, his faith in himself never wavered. He was strong, clever, determined, and focused. No matter how much his commitments demanded of his time, 
he always managed to make real time for the people he loved most. There wasn't one thing he allowed to drain him of his energy or deter him from what he felt mattered most. Brian could brighten any room with his presence. His smile was infectious. He lived, he laughed, he cried too, but never gave up because he believed that life was beautiful and there's always hope. Brian, this is funny, but it's true. And this was his little thing when we talk about God and Christianity. Brian loved the Lord, but the mental war for spiritual righteousness for him was like hamsters and wheels. He chose his friends wisely. In today's world, when young men especially are in trouble, dealing drugs, involved in gangs, crime and violence overall. I was impressed with his choices. Integrity meant everything to him. He chose his friends based on that sole premise. You are at your very best when you act with mercy and compassion as a human being. Brian was very merciful. He lived his life with such enthusiasm and gratitude. We had such wonderful plans for college, the next thing he wanted to embark on. His future looked so bright. Just wanted to take time out to mention that he loved working at the Manchester Credit Union. That gave him the opportunity to experience the real, a real insight of, corporate, of the corporate world. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts to all those who gave him the opportunity. Brian, Shauna and Denise could not be here today. But they want you to know that their lives have changed forever. They missed having you as a big brother. They missed your FaceTime, phone calls, and text messages. To all of Brian's friends, thank you for being strong for him when he needed you the most. To my sister, Tricia, thank you for this beautiful gift you've given us. We're truly grateful. Finally, Brian, I missed you every day. I missed our video calls, texting, phone calls. And let me just tell you that I speak with Brian at least twice a day, every single day. And even this picture with him wearing that pink shirt with that red tie, I visited in August and I brought him some stuff for work and I, mostly shirts and he loved them. But he got, when he got to that pink shirt, he video called me that morning and he said, Auntie Karen, you know, this is the only shirt I haven't worn and I haven't just because it's pink. Why would you do that? Why did you buy me a pink shirt? And I said to him, well, you know, only a confident man can wear a pink shirt. And so I said, iron the shirt and wear the shirt to work. And he was like, okay, um, I'm going to wear the shirt, but if I ever go to work and they look at me like I'm a funny guy, I don't know what you're going to tell me. However, round about his break time, that's how those pictures were taken. He took like four or five of them and he sent them and he said, 
Auntie Karen, listen, even people who don't like me very much had to tell me that I look handsome. <laughs> so that was so good. I missed you asking for my help, picking out a shirt for your special occasions. I missed you sharing your entire life with me. And by the way, <laughs> all the girls that he's ever loved, admired, or friendly with, I know all about you. <laughs> Thank you, my love, for always being intentional about our relationship. I am glad I told you and shown you every single time that I loved you and I cared about you. I never end a conversation with you and not tell you how proud I am of you and how much I love you. I still can't believe you're gone. This pain is imaginable. I've never felt pain like this before. But I'm doing the best I can. All your friends are here. All your friends and family, well-wishers are here. Your mother made it so beautiful. You would have loved it. Uncle Joel pulled out some serious stops. Your friends and their parents stood by your mom every single step of the way. Kina lost a lot of weight. Oh my God, that's so I love you, Brian, my son, my love, my friend. I will continue to carry you in my heart. I will cherish all the wonderful memories we made together. I have in my position hundreds of text messages, voice notes, videos. Those are so precious to me right now. I am so glad we made them. I love you. I really love you. I'm so sorry you had to go so soon. but I'll carry you always. Rest in peace, my sweet son. We praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. We praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Story was told to me of a farmer who had a cow. And every morning for two weeks, he would try his best to milk that cow without success. The day arrived when he was finally successful in getting that precious milk from the cow. He became so emotional that morning when he got that bucket of milk and he allowed his emotions to get the better of him. And as he acted out, the cow became frantic and kicked over the bucket of milk. Today is a day when the emotions are high. And I understand that very well. As I stand here, I am emotional myself because Brian was like a son to me. 
But I tell myself that if I'm going to see this program through, I'll have to contain my emotions. You agree with me? Yes. Let us bear in mind that there are persons standing around and wish they had a seat to sit. So whatever we are doing, we must exercise wisdom. Sometimes it's not what we say, but the emotion, the human emotion mixed with what we say can mess things up. And if you look at the program, you will realize that there's a space for the preacher. And we want to give the preacher his space, his time. Amen? Amen. So I'm asking of us that we use wisdom where wisdom is to be used. Amen? We're moving up with the offertory hymn. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. As we give off a sacrifice to God today, all of us that are here, we have made a special sacrifice to be here. But I'm going to ask that we also make a special sacrifice to God in the giving of our offering to him. Could I have some volunteer to There's a Honda Civic license number 7252ET that is blocking the driveway. Could you kindly remove your vehicle? Thank you very much. Let us now tune our hearts and our voices as we sing the Lord's My Shepherd. I tend to sing a bit high, so... Doesn't seem as if 
Anyone or anything is in place for the collecting of the offering? Proceeded up until now, we have the man of God in our midst, and he's coming with a word momentarily. I know he has a word to bring to us today. A word that will heal the broken heart. A word of hope that we can all smile again. I speak of no other than Pastor John Matthews. But before he comes, Miss, Mrs. Price Jobson will do a selection and the next voice you will hear is that of the man of God pastor matthews in the care of the holy ghost god bless you thank you very much good afternoon everyone this is huge <laughs> god is good there is really a bomb in Gilead. This should have been me um, almost 19 years ago. But I'm here today because of God's goodness, His grace and His mercy. And um, I pray and hope that this experience will, will take it to heart and do what we need to do. Clean the houses we need to clean and make them ready. God bless you. Many things about tomorrow I don't see to understand but I know who holds tomorrow And I know who holds my hand I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day
survivor of that fatal accident is in need of some dire help and so I ask today that you give generously so she can get the necessary treatment that is needed for her to get well again and this, let us not forget also the family of the other young man that also died in that accident. We can only imagine how they are feeling at this time. But we know that God is still in control. Can we do the chorus again of the song? Many things. Creator of heaven and earth and to the bereaved family friend of the deceased other ministers of the gospel other members of the different groups friend family I just want to tell you a big welcome afternoon in this our Thanksgiving service for the late Brian Knight. My son, my baby boy, let me just understand something here that women like pretty things 
casket look really pretty. But no woman, I believe, would love the casket this afternoon. But there is something that I must say to you from the word of God that all of us are here to celebrate the Thanksgiving service for Brian. So those who are on the outside and those who are on the inside it suggests that we are alive. Praise the name of the Lord. It suggests that we have the breath of God and we have been moving ups and down about our own business and affairs. And sometimes we even at a funeral we find the right person to. Sometimes you may never know that there are different things happen at a funeral service. But one thing I want you to realize as a minister of God I sought something that is very relevant to all of us as human beings. And the Bible said, and if I should quote and give you a heads up and the, what I would speak about this afternoon is coming to us from Matthew chapter 5 and verse 18. St. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 18 say this word from the gospel for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass the law till all these fulfill. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say the pastor is going to speak about one jot and one tittle. Edge the person beside you and say that's what you're going to talk about. Sometimes they might sit down and you don't know if they are alive. So, so long as they are alive, just edge them and said the pastor is going to speak about one jot and one tittle. Praise the name of the Lord. There is sometimes in, in life we forget to understand from the, I, I believe we have some English teachers inside here and we have some other educator who understand the, 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 the sense of all these words, uh, uh, the punctuation, uh, 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 there are 14 words that used to describe the English and we must understand them as we go through life. I might only use just a few this afternoon about the one chat and the one title. It might not seem so, the way you understand something, but as a mother of God, me have to tell you what God say and make you understand how serious it is for, to cross the T. Yes. If you don't put that cross on the T, it's not a T. Touch your neighbor and say, that's not a T. So we have got the person beside you and said this minister going to suggest something that there in the English grammar there are 14 of them but I'm going to just touch a few to understand something that sometimes people misinterpret and don't even understand what God is saying about one job. <laughs> Yeah. 
one jot such as that. He said before one jot pass, heaven will dissolve, earth where we sit in will be no more. It suggests that the dot Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Somebody knows each person and say, period, that, period. Full stop. Hello. They might have another one that they call quotation. It suggests that when you hear about quotation, it moved the mother. It was suddenly. Touch me, man. Says suddenly. It suggests suddenly. It suggests that you don't know that it was coming, but it is coming at you. Praise the name of Jesus. Give God a praise in the house. Lift up your voice and praise God. One just, one people. That's my message to you today. I want you to understand how serious God is when He speaks about one just and one people. Praise the name of Jesus. Give God a praise in the house. Give God a praise in the house. Come on, jump up on your feet, everyone. Jump up on your feet. I'm going to preach this message undiluted today. I want you to understand the power of the Holy Ghost. When God get ready, man have to move everybody. Hold on, hold on. Mr. Samuel, hold on. Me go and preach. Everything on your body, you must give an account. You must give God thanks for it. Let me see who have I. Jump up if you have God eye. Can you have to give God thanks for the eye? You don't understand what I said. Jump everybody who have mouth, get up. Because the mouth, Lord God Almighty. Somebody better praise God. Somebody better give him praise. Somebody better worship. And somebody better lift up the voice and give God praise. Yes, somebody better understand. Hello. Hello, me say everybody who have God breath blowing, stand up on your feet. Me I gonna show you something. When hello, God Almighty, you better understand me today. Because we, we are here not just to preach. Him not here nothing. Me done with him long time. Me talk to him already. Me preach to him already. His work is finished. I'm coming. God Almighty. Somebody praise God. Because you don't understand it. It's in your life daily. You sit down. That's all right. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. How important God is. And God no beg no praise. God no beg no praise. If you want to praise him, you praise him. If you don't want God Almighty. If you want to say hallelujah, you say hallelujah. If you want to say thank you Jesus, you can say thank you Jesus. But let me say something to you. We all have to part one day. So we all have to part one day. Brother, sister, pray.
kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. Oh, doctor have to part, uncle have to part, mother have to part, son have to part, daughter have to part, and they. English grammar because sometimes we, we miss the dot so the sentence don't make sense because where the dot supposed to go it not there touch your neighbor and say where the dot supposed to there it not there oh praise the name of the Lord so the statement <laughs> no make no sense because you can't have it as a right, a right, a right. Go on. For the statement to make sense, you must put the dot where the dot must go. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me let go off for the dot because time is going. I'm getting it very dangerous now. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. There is another one called, touch your neighbor and say, bracket. bracket. Wake up your neighbor, say, yes, sir, and say, bracket. They don't understand, say, bracket. Bracket. And if you have anybody in a his bracket, his bracket different. Bracket carries number. Once you touch bracket, you start about number. His number clear. his bracket at this time let me see the hand of those who want to be in his bracket at this time I wouldn't see a hand praise the name of the Lord there is nobody who want to sit within his bracket because the bracket carries a number the number for him is played Bracket only carry 10 years. Some people bracket only carry one year. Some people bracket only carry one day. God Almighty, somebody loose me. Somebody loose me inside. Somebody loose me inside here. Somebody loose me inside here. Hello! Do you know your number? A next one is called Dash. Touch on your band, say, and next one is called Dash. I'm getting in the classroom now. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, give God a praise. You don't know when you see a dash, what a dash mean. A dash suggests something. Them have a saying that in Texas when they are gambling, they say you must know when to run. You must know when to dash. Some people because of the bracket them don't know when to dash. They're afraid mighty God 
God to come out of the bracket. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Give God praise in the house. 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 But I suggest to you that you have a number. And every soul that under this roof have a number. Do you know when your number is going to play? Ask your neighbor beside you. Say, so tell me enough your number. Come on, talk to your neighbor. Talk to your neighbor. You're alive. Talk to your neighbor. Say, so tell me when I your number. Praise the name of Jesus. Give God a praise in the house. Give God a praise in the house. To you today, based on the fact that you don't know your number, prepare for a dash. God bless you. We are a man one day. Mother have the bar, mother have the bar. We are a man. We are a man one day. We are a man. Mother have the bar, son have the bar. Praise. Hallelujah. Turn to neighbor and say, neighbor, what a word. What a word. Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You know, every time I look at the front of a funeral program, you say, born. You see, died. You see, sunrise. You see, sunset. But there's a dash in there. Now, it is what you do with the dash that counts. Amen? There's another saying that says, Life is from B to D, meaning from birth to death. But there's a very important letter between B and D. That letter is C. That letter represents choice. So every one of us inside here, everybody in here has a, thank you very much. You get the message, you get the message, you get the message. Lord, I don't want to start nothing. We're closing, we're closing. I feel like I want to pray for somebody right now. If the message reach you, if the message stir you up, do something to you, and you want to answer the call, just walk come up. There's no rule in a service like this that says we can't have an altar call. If you are being challenged today by the word and you don't want to be in Brian's bracket 
and you want to make a dash for it just come let us pray with you oh lord if i wasn't saved this opportunity would miss me but today the word says if you hear his voice hard not to your heart we encourage souls we don't force anyone and we don't beg anybody to come to Christ we only encourage persons to come to life God bless your hearts thank you very much preacher wonderful word put your hands together wonderful word we have in our midst our regional overseer Elder Montague Our General Secretary for the Jamaica Council Churches of God Seventh-day Brother Harry Douglas. Treasurer, thank you. Treasurer. I want to acknowledge them. We're going to be praying at this time for the bereaved family. Family members on the outside, we're going to be praying for you at this time. So if you're on the outside, I'm going to ask you to come inside as we pray with you. I'm going to invite Ella Montecu to come at this time and to pray for the bereaved family. I'm going to ask the family members to remain seated and the rest of us to stand at this time as we put them before the throne of God. We know it's not an easy time for them trying times but God will fix it Elder Montague let us pray loving father you will come one more time through your dear beloved son Jesus Christ Giving your thanks, we praise you, we adore you, we lift you up, we worship you. God, when we think of your goodness and all that you have done unto us, then our soul cry out, hallelujah. Thank you for everything that took place in this house from morning until now. For the songs, the tribute, the message, prayers, scripture reading, thank you. Thank you for the beautiful day that you allow us. Thank you for the moderator that do such a great job. And now, Lord, God and Father, just put into your hand the family of the deceit. You can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. At this time, Lord, you are acquainted with the aches, you are acquainted with the pain, you are acquainted with the sorrow, you are acquainted with the grief. Because, Lord, you first experienced when you sent your only begotten Son into this world. That, oh God, when we're into a situation like this, we can cry unto you and you do understand. Here at this moment, Lord, I put a mother. Father, and all the rest of family into your hand. You know the feeling that they're going through now. I ask in the name of Jesus that you'll give one hug, one touch. And when you touch, it make a difference. God, I ask, Lord, that everything that they lose, you will put it back in place. Because you can give, do four more abundant and we could ask of you. You understand. You tears and language, you do understand aches and pain you do understand therefore lord i ask that you'll take the case in hand be to them lord as a son be to them as a brother a cousin whatever they lose lord you is 
able to do far way more. Ask these and more I say thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Elder Montecchio. I must tell you that you have done well so far. Give yourself a pat on the shoulder. And I don't want you to spoil it now. I'm going to be giving some instructions. The interment will be at the Melrose Cemetery. And bear in mind that there are other funerals that is going on that will have the interment of their loved ones at the same place. So we want to do, leave here in an orderly manner so we can get there safely. At the singing of the then members of the immediate family will follow in that order then the rest casket then members of the immediate family program and we'll pick it up at the cemetery god bless you you have been can we stand for a change god sent his son they called him jesus he came to love heal and forgive